experience the thrilling world of dirt track racing at Oshuiken Speedway, your ultimate destination for heart-pounding action in Ontario. Every Friday, tune into G4's TV or witness the excitement live as top-tier sprint cars, mini stocks, thunder stocks vie for victory on the track. Owned by renowned Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer Glenn Styers and skillfully run by our friend General Manager Clinton Jeffrey, Oshweek and Speedway promises an unforgettable evening of short track dirt racing. Picture the adrenaline charge scene with drivers going side by side delivering jaw dropping performances that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Don't miss out on the Friday night excitement and mark your calendars for the upcoming Sprint Car Nationals with a whopping $20,000 prize on September 14th. The lineup doesn't stop there. From the NASCAR Canada Series on dirt in July to the UMP Modifieds, 360 Sprint Cars, Crates, Mini Stocks, Thunder Stocks, Vintage Modifieds, Flat Track Motorcycles, and a myriad of other thrilling races, Oshuiken Speedway has something for every racing enthusiast visit oshwikenspeedway.ca now and gear up for an adrenaline filled experience like no other Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stickers and Scuffs podcast here for Oshweekin Speedway Month. Now, what the heck is Connor Ross doing here uh, for Oshweekin Month? I assume it's got something to do with Oshweekin Speedway. Uh, Graydon Bond, what would you what do you think? I don't know. I think we better ask. We got uh, Connor here with us. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great. Can't. Uh, it's going great. How about you guys? We're doing awesome. Yeah, you can't complain because you got something to say, don't you? What's yeah. going on, buddy? What's uh yeah, what's the deal, man? Well, we uh after last season we got to test a crate sprint out of Shrieking for the Crate Nationals this Saturday day Saturday date, sorry. And then I uh, got to race it again at Humberstone for the last race of the crate sprints season, and then over the off season I talked to dad about it. I knew I, it was going to bite me. And Cam Thompson also told me, it's going to bite you when you test. I said, I know. And then here we are now getting ready for this season. We're going to race out of Shriek and Speedway full time, hopefully. And uh, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's a big, big jump from a couple of years ago, man. You were, I mean, my first uh, started talking to you, man, it was, geez, it was, it feels like forever ago. It really wasn't yeah. it was like 22, I think it was. <laughs> Um, you know, actually, this is funny, Graydon. We 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 talked about this the other day. You're actually making your second appearance on the Stickers and Scuffs <laughs> podcast. Was he not the pasta maker himself in the background for his dad's interview way back? And I think our yes. first, our first, <laughs> I do remember season. that actually. Yes, he, our he very wasn't too first... happy about that. <laughs> Uh, so we know he can cook everybody. Connor Ross is not just a driver. He's a cook too. He makes great <laughs> pasta. It looks fantastic. Um, man, this is exciting stuff. So when we had started mm -hmm. talking about, uh, about your racing deal, you were actually running, uh, for, uh, Twitch it in the, the 44 out at, uh, in the junior, in the uh, juniors in the uh, Canadian vintage modifieds. Things were what they were in that. But we know that when I was talking with you, dirt is where your heart is at. And I'm just curious how long it's been something that you wanted to try. I've wanted to try it since I got behind the wheel of the pavement car. I knew is well, that's where I grew up most Friday nights, just always going on shrieking with that and then Flambro or somewhere Saturday. Mm -hmm. But no, I've uh, I've always wanted to test a crate car or something on dirt. And then when we had that come up with a Canadian Vintage Modified. We had a crate. And I just, not that I wasn't having fun behind the wheel. After that first full season, it was just a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a step back as we were at Burger Barn at the time. 
and that was our sponsor and they had their dirt side. So I went full time crewing for them. And whenever they weren't racing, I'd go race. And then after that, it really bit me. And then we were sitting there, our dad and I were talking and we said, well, we have this crate motor. We could convert it over to methanol and go run some crate sprint cars, or we can just leave it as is and get a Camaro and run Thunderstocks. And then the deal came together with Jamie Turner. We had a crew car for everyone. So we said, you know, everyone brought money to the table and we said, here, we got a motor just sitting here. We'll convert it over and here we are now. So that's always been one I wanted to go. Damn, that's, that's a great story. Yeah. yeah. And that I want to touch on that specifically too, because racing obviously is a, a a common thing between you and your dad. And that's something as a dad myself, I find that kind of that's something that keeps you engaged with your son and uh and that relationship and the bonding experience through that. So I mean when it comes time to like decide on what you're going to do for racing, it's maybe a little bit easier because you got at least a parent that's in your corner already. <laughs> no, 100. I feel bad for mom because she doesn't get to see dad. Well, she I shouldn't say she doesn't get to see dad much in the summer, but weekends he's gone and I'm gone. So yeah. now, luckily, we'll at least be all at the same place on Friday nights, just different areas. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like a good deal for her, actually. <laughs> That's like the typical racing family, though, right? Once, uh, yeah, everybody's kind of got their roles or whatever, uh, respectively. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I mean, you're you're not necessarily together, but you're together. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. So, so, how does Dad feel about the switch going from pavement to dirt? It's actually he's he's nervous. It's more mom. She. I kept telling her I was testing a crate spring car and she kept saying, no, you're not. But it wasn't her saying no. It was her not wanting to believe that. And on the day of the test, I asked her if she's coming. Mm -hmm. And she said, you're funny. And dad had to seriously say no, like he's, he's going at it. So mm -hmm. it's her, more of her, but he's, he's nervous. I think a little bit because he sees what can happen on a Friday night in a spring yeah. car. Yeah. So, but but this is it, man. You're getting to go out there and go out. And this is the thing. Great sprints. It, let's not lie here. They're still fast. They're still very, very competitive. They put on a show each and every week. And you're not going out there with like schlubs. Okay. You're going out there with really talented racers. I mean, we talked about it before. You talked about uh, another SNS racing family member, uh, Cam Thompson, who is a really bad influence, clearly um for for getting you to get into this but uh it's gonna you're gonna be racing with him out on the on the dirt that's awesome no i'm i'm super pumped i'm actually uh so i grew for nathan acklin with Corey turner and then jamie turner's where cars kept at so they have a race this saturday at Merrittville. crates are not racing there it's 360 so we're not going to the testing tune tomorrow but cam is so i'm going to go out there and help him and turn a free wrenches and I think I'm bringing my helmet maybe taking a lap or two in that so I guess I'll dust off the suit and helmet tonight and have some fun tomorrow that sounds like a that's good pretty, plan yeah that's a good day it's supposed to be a nice day at least I don't know up here but it sounds like weather's going to be good for going to shake a car down it's going to be perfect nice so we were just talking about it a little bit like you play other sports too and We've seen social media posts like sports injuries are a reality. And I mean, so that kind of obviously in your mother's context, like plays into it, like what can happen in a car. But I mean, you have to, <laughs> you're kind of proved like you can get hurt doing whatever. I mean, uh, but I mean, racers are, are aware of the risks of, of what can happen in a car and, and accidents happen and that sort of thing. I guess what I'm getting at is the psychology part of it. Like, do you have to like mentally prepare yourself for this? Are you ready in your head now to kind of take on this new challenge? I'm ready to take it. I mean, you know, every time you play a sport, whether hockey, even baseball, football, I, you, you know, there's a risk and yeah. you're not trying to think about it, but stuff happens and, I know sprint cars, you like to flip. If you catch one bad wheel, you're going for a ride. So I, I try and you try and block it out, but when you strap in, you know it's you know it's a risk. And uh I think I think about that more before the race. When I'm under yeah. firing the engine, right, like 
doing my pace laps. But once it's green flag, there's you don't think about anything other than that. It's you lock in there and it's time to go. I guess that's kind of my follow up to it too. Is like you have all those things that go through your mind when you're just sitting there belted in, waiting, and that sort of stuff. But when it is time, like everything like in you is like elevated. Like you're you're super focused, super like pumped to get the job done. So I mean, it's. It's hard to explain, but I, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like everything is just like an elevated sense of awareness. So you're going to go out of your way to not get out of the way of people and that sort of thing. No, 100%. When you're sitting there before the race, you get pushed off. You're thinking, did I, did I tighten up the wheels enough? Did I, did I check this? Did I forget to tighten that up after we changed it? There's so many things running through your head. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, as soon as you fire up that car, you're you're locked in and ready to go for 20 to 30 laps. Yeah, it's time to stop thinking and just do. No, 100%. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious how, like, what what is it for you this year that's going to be the biggest challenge? Uh, obviously, you've gotten, you know, you've gotten some time in the car, but not really a, a, a lot. And we know the Big O is the most competitive dirt track in the province. So what is it that's going to be the, the toughest thing for you to, to navigate? I think just making it in on a regular Friday show, just it, you get 30 to 40 sprint cars every Friday night. You, mm -hmm. that's your first goal is for me, especially making the A main. That's, that's what I want. I need every night. It doesn't matter if I run the B, but as long as I'm in the show, it's a good night. And then I have a few goals this year, make every, or make at least every A I try and get into. And then the great nationals. I, I want to be a part of that. That's a yeah. Big one. Yeah, that's that's the show right there. I mean, that the the Big O doesn't shy away from putting on big events. Uh, we're really glad to have them as a as a partner this year and and, and get to talk about them and and by having this this special month, you're going to the track that so many of the people that you've gone up growing up watching have raced on. How much time have you gotten? I mean, in prepped for this year, have you? Are you going to do like you said a couple laps here? But what's the plan before the racing season starts? Are you going to do any tests? Are you going to do any sort of practice laps um, before week one, or are we uh, just going to kind of give it the old? You know, I'll show up and I'll see how I do. We have uh, we have two tests and tunes there. Uh, the first week of next month i think i don't even know but i know we have two scheduled before the season starts and then kind of just first so what's one. that what's that for then what's that what are you that's doing just, during that that's just, just shake practice. it down yep just shake it the, down yeah make sure you got everything where you want to be where the car you have the car and go into week one it's base setup I can't, I can't get over. You guys are. I, I've talked about this before on the show, Graydon. That there's some things that I can't watch because you guys <laughs> yeah. are just nuts. Uh, it it's the sprint cars. You guys are like the midget racers. You guys just like balls of steel. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Let's. That's what it is to go out and do what you guys do. I mean, to see that I seen that wreck with uh, Glenn and Aaron Turkey last year, and I yeah. my jaw went to the brown I'm like, who the hell is dumb enough to do this well right there right there <laughs> our dirt our dirt racers and you guys put on no seriously the skill but not just the skill it's i think i think a good word is finesse because you mentioned this earlier it's probably better than dumb yeah yeah probably <laughs> i couldn't think of it then okay um, <laughs> We're not trying to insult anybody. <laughs> it's a little late for that, but um, that's why we're learning here. We're learning about it. But legitimately, that was my thought. Graydon Bunn was like, yeah. who the heck would ever want to do that? Well, clearly a lot of people want to do it yeah. and do it well. But we heard this from Ashton Dickey. We heard this from Dave Bailey. The track being ready. You don't know how the track is going to be when you get out there. So what is race one going to look like for you then? With dirt, you can, I shouldn't say, you know what the track's going to do. There's a few tricks and tips that you can kind of like, you can go out there with a flathead screwdriver to shove that down on the track. And if it comes up to the handle, you know, it's not going to be hard and it's mm -hmm. going to roll up a little bit. So there's a few things you can kind of do before the night even starts 
to get ahead. But other than that, you roll up, you roll over your hot laps, hope you have your setup somewhere close. Because if you're not, you're making a boatload of changes for your heat race. And it, that's the main part, just getting the setup to where you think the track's going to be. And it'll be a lot, a lot of an easier night if that's the case. Mm hmm. But there's no real answer to your question there. It's <laughs> other than that one thing, you just go out and. I guess it's it. it just like legitimately crapshoot, right? Like you got what you got, and and see how you. Everybody's do on the same playing field. It's a nice part it. about that. You just love can't it. Beat that that ass of the pants feel and. Yeah. <laughs> I know Is it's it gonna. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I I was just gonna say I know it's gonna scare the crap out of me if I'm going into turn one and. I'm full till and I hit one of those ruts. I know it's going to catch my attention. I haven't had that happen to me yet, but it's going to happen. And I know, uh, well, like last year, the track was super smooth. And you're, mm -hmm. when I was out there, the track was not, wasn't was slick, but we ran in Crete Nationals the night before and the 360s ran on it. I think that's it. But it's still slick. And you get out there and you're still foot to the floor and you don't roll all the way out with a sprint curve. You have to keep your foot in it slightly a bit just for the way the stagger works and everything. Yeah. So you're barely on the brake just to slow you down a little bit. But other than that, you're right back in. And I know once I catch one of those ruts, it's it's going to be a real eye-opener experience for me, but <laughs> I'm kind of pumped for it. Oh, man. Uh, we saw like even today that uh, on social media, the, the track's getting uh, some maintenance done, getting ready, packing it down. We, it's Ocean Week and Speedway Month. Just talk about, as you said earlier in the show, you've been going there since you were a little kid. What's it mean to 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 race there, to be a part of the Oshwikan Speedway culture? Oshwikan's like, Speedway is my second home. I grew up there. Glenn Stiers has known me since I was born. My dad worked there before I was born. So there's 19 years that I was going. I think I went there my first few weeks. I Dad's nodding his head. Yeah, I remember there vaguely being told a story. I was there, but no, I walk around there and I don't know half of the people, but they know me just from being in a <laughs> stroller or something around my dad's shoulders. So I've been there and I've been, I worked at the track for a year when I was twelve or thirteen, and I've I've seen everything there. I've, like I said, I'm there every Friday, and now I'm just in a different role at the track. Now I get to be one of those, one of the. People that you see on the track just giving it their all. That's pretty cool. You're not scared of heights, obviously, if you're out around on your dad's shoulders, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so, but I am kind of <laughs> heights aren't my favorite thing, but yeah. I love it. Helmet. I love it. The guy that does crate sprint dirt racing isn't scared of that stuff. He's scared of heights. Amazing. Amazing. We'll have to just, you know fly up a little bit and get one of those ruts and then you'll learn real quick how high those things can go right no just, obviously obviously it's going to be a, a good season uh getting out there and your first first foray as well why i know you said you had to create motor but how close were you to making that decision to go to thunderstocks instead of the great sprints because obviously they're completely different types of vehicles we thought about it and I don't know much about a great spin, nor do a Thunderstock. I was talking to Cam Thompson. He said, well, i got a Thunderstock here. You can test it out in there. You can try it. But then, like, we had this deal come together with the Turners, mm -hmm. and Jamie had this crate car, and Jeremy Hughes, they, those were the two guys behind it. They let all the crate or the crew guys have some fun. And once I got behind it, I've been crewing for them. When did I get that burger barn right? Two, three years ago? So I've been working on a sprinkler for two three years now and luckily enough i've learned a lot and i know what it takes to race a crates what i think it takes to race a sprinkler <laughs> i know how to make some adjustments i know the cars so that was a lot easier and jamie turner and i talked it over and we made a deal that he's going to help me out so that was a huge huge plus to have him in my corner as he's been going at it for 10 plus years in a sprint car and I don't even know how many years he's been on dirt modifieds at Merrickville. It's been 20 plus. So it's been great to have him in my corner helping me and showing me how to build this car. So then next year when it's time to take it apart and build it back up, I can do it by myself. Oh, I think 
it's true to the adage, like walk before you run. I mean, that get like what you've said here, crewing and, and learning the, the ropes of the car. I mean, you're, you're finding the, all that stuff out and gaining a working knowledge before you strap yourself into one. So, I mean, that for one would give you a little bit more, as I say, working knowledge. So, you know, what feeling something, you can probably tell what that is and what adjustment you need to make for feedback and that sort of thing. So that's got to be uh, a confidence booster for you going into the season, I would think. No, 100%. It definitely has been uh, learning a lot. We've, it was slow at the start. We didn't have the car, so we've been not thrashing, but we should be a lot. We should have more progress than we do. But no, it was uh, it was after Dad and I went to Pennsylvania. I said to myself, "All right, it's go time. Yeah. Time to get this thing started." So we're uh, we're in good shape, but no, it's been a lot of it's been a very fun process and a very fun learning curve. Are there it's not plans? Not a lot of work, that's for sure. I mean, like yeah, it's, <laughs> it, as you said, like it everything has to come together, timing, parts, set, like getting all that stuff ready to go, and it's. As you said, not necessarily a thrash, but maybe organized chaos, and you're not wasting any time, like moving pretty quick. But but it's uh, it's it's got to be a labor of love for you to do it, and like you want to be there and be a part of that action for sure. So that's the carrot dangling in front of you, right? Yeah. No, it is one hundred percent. Are there plans to travel outside of uh, the Big O this year? You're going to do any of the specials out at Merrittville, Humberstone? Uh, Southern mm-hmm. Ontario. I don't know if they do any of those uh, crate sprints, but uh, they're back open. So, no, they have a few crate dates at Southern Ontario. I don't. As of right now, Merrittville does not have any crate sprint shows on the schedule. Humberstone may at the end of the year. Brighton has their Labor Day Classic, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. That's it's one of my favorite tracks. Dad Dad used to announce there a few times in, during the summer, and we'd go down and. I'm uh, great friends with the uh, owner's kids, so I'll go down there and work on their race cars and go race with them. So, no, I'm I'm pumped to go to Brighton. That's, that's circled on the calendar, and hopefully Southern Ontario Motorsports Speedway. But other than that, just those three as of right now, unless Humberstone has a date, and same with Maryville, but I'd love to get to go to those racetracks. Not a lot of people get to experience this. Um, really... Dale Jarrett, um, their dad gets to announce their races. Uh, you've got a couple in the in the the vintage modifieds, but this yeah. is a little different because this is your dad at the track that you grew up going to that you are now going to be racing on, and he's going to say your name, hopefully. <laughs> I'd hope so. It would it would kind of suck if that didn't happen, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, out there cool. on the track at the big O in on the big stage on G force TV. What's the, what's it like? I, I can't imagine that your excitement level is, is going to be like through the roof. And I, I don't know, man, I don't know how I'd be able probably to do that. Street, I would think too for, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. a two way street. Yeah. I think dad's probably, your dad's probably pretty, pretty pumped and so was everybody i think clinton and greg the entire team there because they've all seen the same right yeah no i know dad was he was really nervous when i tested there the first time but not many people can say they shared a race car with their dad no they ran in the same division and 15 years apart cool. yeah. i've raced against his car which is weird to say because it's been <laughs> so long but that's just the way the cdms work yeah. And no, the, I can't wait for him to announce my races. It's definitely cool. That's kind of what I missed during the CVM was he wasn't there all the time. He was always yeah. Sobble, Sunset, Quebec, <laughs> yeah. all over the uh, country. So I'd, I'd text him. He'd, he'd watch on race monitor and give you some feedback. But then I also got to do it with him. I got to crew for him. So that was really cool. But no, this is definitely, like you said, he's announced – I think two of my races or three, but this is every Friday now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is the track. This is the yeah. one that means the most. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to do this 
uh, season without some very important people, not just the people that are working on the car with you, um, those that are close to you in your in your fr- family and friends, but also your partners. And and we here on the on the podcast, it's very important that we we have to thank all of our partners. Uh, you know, they they allow us to do uh, this and and go to to put on some amazing stuff. And um, the same with you, uh, you get to do that. This is your time to shout them out and shout out any social media as well. So we'll start with the partners and, and people that you want to thank. There's a, there's a few in the works or some I can't say right now. Cause I don't yep. even know if I can or not, but I got to thank Rob Twitch. He's going to help me out a little bit this year. Again, I got to, I got to thank everyone at the Turner shop from Jeremy May, Alan Downey, Jamie Turner, Corey, Josh, Brand- Brandon and Braden, and Brian, they, everybody's come together in that shop to help me put a seat and put put some bars in the car. Like it's it's a team effort, and uh, I've had a few private people help me out along the way that aren't businesses, but just hear kind of a story of a guy going or a kid going, not a kid, I guess I'm an adult, an adult going racing <laughs> through some through some money so to help me out. But we have a few. Um, media updates and posts coming soon i haven't really been much i haven't really talked about this at all this year i was just waiting to kind of break it out on here on jomo and you know this is when i'll get the media post pumping and all that so but no we have a few updates we're going to come out with soon sponsorship wise and if anybody's want, willing to jump on board or wanting to we get on live at g4 tv and on shriek in the hottest dirt track and you could say north america because i don't know what other dirt track has done what we've done there you're not wrong. He's going to be. You. Well, I was going to say he's going to be an SNS racing family. I was just going to say this year. I got to thank be, you guys for letting me come on here and no, share some man, stories and uh, <laughs> get my name out there. It is. It is what your what you what your dad has done for us, and uh, you know it's the it's the you know the least we could do really, and and we're so excited to see how this goes, man. Uh, we're going to be just as nervous as he is. Um, but, uh, you know what, this is, uh, this is awesome that you, we got to have you on here. You got to announce your plans and, uh, we get to see you racing on Friday nights, man. That, that is the coolest thing ever. Um, and, uh, we want to wish you, uh, the best of luck for 2024, man. Go live that dream because, uh, this man beside me on oh, this, this way, this man beside me got to live his dream out uh, a couple years ago and it's continuing. And, and now you get to do that too. And, and, and in the fashion that you want to by racing at uh, the big O and that's just, oh, I'm just so happy for you, buddy. So congratulations and the best of luck this year. Thank you so much for having me on tonight, guys. Thank you, man.